Hi there, and welcome to Telefunkian. Today, we have another installment in our series on the Powertran Transcendent 2000. This video features a minor modification of the T2000. If you've seen our other videos, you will know the Transcendent 2000, or T2000 for short, is a single oscillator kit-based monosynth released in the United Kingdom in 1978. This particular specimen was imported to Canada in as-is, non-working condition. We've already gone through the machine and refurbished a number of worn components, cleaned the switches and contacts, and repaired the broken oscillator. We're now at the stage where everything's working, the synth has been tuned and calibrated, and we're about to turn our attention to one remaining issue and undertake a minor modification before we button it up. So in today's video, we will modify the gain staging of the T2000. This will address an issue that's been referred to previously as a signal-to-noise problem with the T2000, but I'd rather characterize it as an imbalance in the VCO signal level relative to that of the oscillating filter. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but if you're impatient and just want to see how to do the modification, feel free to skip ahead to the last few minutes of the video. Other videos on our channel cover the previously mentioned refurbishing and repair of this instrument, including converting the power supply to work here in North America. If any of these sound interesting to you, please be sure to check out the other videos on the channel. If you're looking for more information on the Transcendent 2000, there are a handful of good YouTube videos on channels such as Synthmania, Look Mum No Computer, Mark Jenkins Channel, and MindBurner. I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get started. The Powertran Transcendent 2000 was sold as a kit starting in 1978, and as such, each individual instrument was built by the end user, relying on the instructions provided in the relevant issues of Electronics Today International. These included some rudimentary setup tuning and calibration instructions that we've profiled in our T2000 calibration video on the channel. Over time, the T2000 achieved a reputation for being a rather janky piece of kit, and that the quality of each individual specimen was highly dependent on the build quality and how well the instrument had been set up, which varied tremendously. With respect to the sound of the instrument, a frequent complaint was that its voices were too quiet, and this was often referred to as a signal-to-noise issue. With the advent of the internet, even prior to the development of the World Wide Web, a number of text-based news groups and mail servers were set up to serve the synthesizer enthusiast community. The most prominent of these was Analog Heaven, started in the early 90s, even before web browsers were a thing. Back in 2002, Tony Allgood of Oakley Sound Systems posted some recommended modifications for the T2000. We'll come back to these in a moment. Our T2000 has been calibrated and sounds great. When properly serviced and set up, in my opinion, there's no signal-to-noise issue per se. If what we mean by signal-to-noise is the sound signal produced by the instrument compared to the noise floor when it isn't being played. With respect to the so-called noise floor on this instrument, we're looking at about minus 126 dB uh, compared to the minus 6 or maybe even minus 3 dB at peak that we're able to achieve with the instrument. So I think we have about 110 decibels worth of noise floor or headroom, which is more than adequate. So this is a very quiet instrument when it's properly set up and calibrated. There is, however, another issue that might warrant our attention, and this is what the rest of the video is going to address. This is the relationship between the signal levels produced by the voltage-controlled oscillator and the signal produced by the oscillating filter. The filter signal level is as much as 10 times greater than the VCO, drowning out the VCO portion of the voice, so you can't hear it at all when the filter resonates. The remainder of the video will examine the circuitry in the synthesizer's audio path so that we can understand what's going on and see if we can rebalance the gain staging. The schematic of the T2000 was published in Electronics Today International in the form of individual schematics of the functional elements that combine to make the machine, such as the power supply schematic, one for the keyboard, noise generator, envelope generator, VCO, and so on. I've combined them all on one sheet in the slide on your screen, and that portion responsible for the audio path is shown on this next slide. 
The pitch control voltage comes in on the left-hand side of the VCO and is indicated by the yellow arrow. This establishes the pitch of the oscillator, which generates either a square wave, shown in blue, or a sawtooth waveform, shown in green. The selected waveform, shown in red, is mixed with the noise signal in the noise generation circuit before entering the voltage-controlled filter to the right. The filtered signal then passes through the VCA, which is in turn controlled by the ADSR envelope generator, which is not shown in this slide. If we examine Tony Allgood's suggestions for modifying the T2000, we see they can be broken down into three mods. A modification to the resistor that synthesizer voice passes through between the VCO and the filter, a modification to a coupling capacitor in the VCO, and a modification to the resistors that establish the input voltage at the VCA. The last of these involves an increase to the resistor values attached to the inverting input on IC22, which is not a traditional op-amp, but rather a 3080 operational transconductance amplifier. I reached out to Tony Allgood, who helpfully confirmed for me that increasing these resistor values increases the differential voltage at the input of the OTA. As Tony explains, R82 forms a simple voltage divider with R81. Since I've increased R81 to 10K, it's necessary to increase R82 by a similar-ish amount. To keep the same dividing ratio as before, R82 should be 15 meg, but 15 meg resistors were hard to come by. It's important that both inputs of the OTA see roughly the same input resistance to reduce the effects of unwanted input offset voltage. This is the reason that both R80 and R81 were made the same value. However, the effects of the source resistance were ignored when I made that mod. And these days, I'd actually make R80 10K and R81 9.5 3K. The source resistance to the input divider is the combined resistance of R79 and R75 or R77. Pin 3 of the 3080 therefore sees a DC input resistance of 10K in parallel with the series combination of R79 and R75 over R77, i.e. 200K. This is roughly 9.52K, which is certainly close enough to 10K, but these days you can get 9.53 resistors, so why not? R82 is of sufficiently high value not to have any appreciable effect on pin 2. Thanks, Tony. So with this feedback from Tony, I might suggest a more modern version of this modification would be to swap a 10K resistor at R80, 9.53K at R81, and 15 meg at R82. But what will this accomplish? Again, Tony says, raising the input voltage present on the input to the OTA will increase output level, but it also increases nonlinearity i.e. overdriven distortion products can now be heard. This type of tan H distortion is useful for a musician, particularly on a single VCO monosynth, where we don't really have to concern ourselves with intermodulation distortion, which can sound horrible. Since we can control the level of the VCO signal on the front panel of the T2000, we can still operate the OTA in its more linear region simply by turning down the VCO level if needed. So all of this is good, all good, but it doesn't address the mismatch between the VCO voice and the filter oscillation that we've been talking about. What about the other modifications? The second modification suggested by Tony is to swap out C26. C26 is a coupling capacitor in the VCO. Together with R60, C26 forms a high-pass filter on the output of the sawtooth wave. Tony suggests increasing the value of this capacitor from 100 nanofarads to 470 nanofarads, which will move the high-pass filter cutoff frequency, which is nominally 7.2 hertz, down to 1.5 hertz. However, given that the nominal cutoff frequency is already below the range of human hearing, and that this modification only affects the sawtooth waveform, I'm choosing not to implement this modification for the time being. This leaves us with the last of the three modifications suggested by Tony reducing the value of R129, the resistor coupling the VCO to the VCF. All of the sound from the VCO passes through this resistor, so this might be a good candidate. Tony suggested replacing R129, specified as a 68K resistor in the original build, with a 33K resistor. 
In combination with Tony's other mods, this has given him good results. I'm just interested in boosting the signal from the VCO, but I don't want to damage the OTAs in the filter. So how low can I go? Perhaps some experimentation is in order. So the final thing that we're going to be addressing here with this instrument is a known issue, which is that it has a, a relatively low signal output and we're connected to the digital oscilloscope and if we play a note we get about a maximum of about half a volt peak to peak on the output of the instrument in my opinion there's an issue in terms of the difference in output between the VCA amplifying the oscillator signals and the filter when the filter itself is self oscillating. So now we're looking at five volts per division and we can really frankly barely see that. Yet, if we come over to the filter section of the instrument to self oscillate you can see you can see the magnitude of that signal right there uh, which is substantially greater than that of, uh, of of the actual oscillators so yeah we've got about uh, 5.6 volts peak to peak which is uh, exactly what we might expect because we have a Zener diode in the filter section which is limiting the output so the output of the filter self-oscillation is approximately 10 times greater than the output of the actual oscillators themselves. That, although that might make for some raunchy waveforms, it might not be uh, exactly what we're looking for in terms of the um, instrument and the utility thereof. So some of the things that have been described as potential modifications to address the so-called signal-to-noise issue uh, may help us in this regard. And they include uh, adjustments to the VCA section and that portion of the uh, VCA uh, connected to IC22 that establishes uh, an offset for the input voltage, a recommended uh, replacement of a capacitor in the actual oscillator. This is capacitor C26, which is 100 nanofarads. And some have uh, suggested that this could be replaced with a 470 nanofarad capacitor. However, uh, I'm more interested in increasing the output of the VCO and the final adjustment that has been recommended is an adjustment to R129, which couples the VCO to the VCF and the VCA. By decreasing the value of this resistor, we may be able to increase the output of the actual VCO. And that portion of the output, that's actually getting to the filter itself and change the balance of the result. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take a 100K potentiometer and put it in parallel with the uh, resistor in question. And this will allow me to dial in a reduced resistance and monitor the impact of this adjustment on the amplitude of the VCO. So this 100K resistor in parallel with the 66K has already given us a little bit of a, uh, an increase in the amplitude. This is uh, approaching 0.75 volts. So with this potentiometer in parallel with the resistor in question, R129, uh, we see that we have a waveform of around uh, 0.7 of, of a volt or so, and that depends a little bit on 
where it is in its sweep, but about 0.7 of a volt. And so if I adjust this potentiometer and decrease the resistance further, uh, we should see a, a change. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll <clears throat> bypass the ADSR. Now I've decreased that quite a bit. And you can see we're going up to about 1.1 volts at peak. And I'll see what happens if I adjust it further. So that's about 2.2. And if we uh, introduce a little bit of oscillation in the filter, We can turn this down quite easily. And you see we, we still have our uh, five volts peak to peak filter oscillation. And at least now we can hear the waveform from the VCO in the background of that, if we turn it up all the way. So maybe I'll turn that down just a little bit. I'll, I'll measure the uh, resistance here. Yep. So about 20K or so. And then in parallel with a, uh, a resistor that is 68K. So um, that gives us an idea of what kind of resistance value we might shoot for in order to establish that kind of gain. So we have replaced the resistor R129, which was a 68K resistor with a 15K resistor. And that has changed the uh, gain structure quite a bit. And we can see that actually, I'll turn down the resonance there. We can see we've got uh, quite a bit more signal than we had previously. Where we previously had about a uh, 500 millivolt peak to peak signal, we've got now over one, one volt, 1 1.4, 1 1.2 volts or so. Uh, but most importantly, when we start to bring in the resonance, we can actually, we can still hear the, uh, the voice and and the resonance is not overpowering the actual voice
which is uh, a much more balanced situation than what we had previously. So uh, with this one modification, rather than the numerous other modifications, we appear to have hit a, a reasonable sweet spot without affecting um, the low end balance, and nor uh, are we overwhelming the OTAs uh, that comprise the filter and the VCA itself, uh, but rather we've simply allowed more of the signal from the voltage controlled oscillators to get through to the filter uh, before becoming part of that feedback loop that allows the filter to do its business. That's an approach that I think those of you who may be owners of T2000s may want to try. And uh, if, if you do try it and you have success, please uh, let me know in the comments. Well, that's all for today's video. I hope you found it useful and entertaining. A special thanks to Tony Allgood from Oakley Sound Systems for humoring me and revisiting his post from all those years ago. Oakley Sound Systems is famous for their TB3030, one of the earlier reworkings of the famous TB303. And Tony still makes and sells high quality modular kits in the 5U and Euro rack formats. Be sure to check out his website at www.oakleysound.com. That's www.oakleysound.com. Also, be sure to check out the other videos on this channel, including the videos on repair and tuning and calibration of the T2000. Coming soon, we hope to have a new series on the vintage Dynacord tube-based tape echo, and soon after, we'll be rebuilding a Roland CR78. Thanks for watching.